Welcome back. This is part two of my freehanding tips and this time we are talking about horses. So I'm going to talk you through angles again and the importance of angles, um, sizing of eyes, things to kind of look out for uh, and general sort of like helpful tips if you want to freehand or indeed, you know, if you want to be um, tracing or using grids or projectors. Now, there are certain things with horses that I just wanted to um, talk about. Horses front ways. So this is quite a good one to have a look at. And horses on a bit of a three quarter angle like this one. So if we look at this particular horse here and we've got the eyes um, front. So the horse is basically dead straight looking at us. Now, horses have got their eyes on the side of their head. I've got another example here. Depending on the breed will depend on how far to the side the horse's eyes are. With something like, I don't know the breed of this one, but it does look a little bit Araby or Welshy or something like that. Some breeds have their eyes set a little bit further forward than other breeds. So on this particular breed, you can see quite a lot of the eye and they're set a little bit more forward on the front of the face. Whereas this, this horse here, this one, the eyes are set more back on the side of the face, so you're not seeing quite as much of the eyeball in there. Now, one of the things to really, really, really remember, and it doesn't matter whether you're freehanding or whether you're tracing or whatever, um, one of the things that we do very, very often when we're drawing horses' eyes is we make them far more bulbous than what they are. Now, um, these are actually, they're on, a, they're on an angle, so the angle that these eyes are set on is this sort of an angle here. Um, and there's not a massive great big bulbous eye and they are they aren't that big either and that's one of the biggest things that we as artists do when we're drawing horses is, and dogs and any animals in particular really we we end up with the eyes being much bigger than what they are and if you're going to be freehanding that's one of the things that is really really important to remember is don't end up with the eyes bigger than what they are we always tend to over um, over egg the eye if you like we always tend to make it bigger and um, you can notice it you know if if, an, if a drawing has been done and the eyes are too big then it's it's quite noticeable um, so just watch that your eyes don't end up being right on the front of the head um, again it's very important to draw what you see not what you think you see and that way you're going to end up with the eyes being the, the correct shape um, again, this is a very difficult angle. You know, these are actually on quite a steep angle here. Um, and they're quite narrow as well. There's not a huge amount of the eyeball showing. Um, so, and I find the front view of a horse is particularly challenging. Now, when you come to a horse like this one, or like this one, where you've got this big, it's a three quarter view, and you've actually got the, um, the eye socket on the other side showing. This one is showing a little bit of eye here and this one isn't really showing any eye at all. Again, it's very, very important not to end up with a with a sort of like a big bubble coming out of the side of the eye. There's hardly any eyeball showing here at all. Actually, all you need is... Let's just move this. Um, all you need on something like this is you've got the um, you've got the eye socket there, kind of coming down, and then you've got the it's a bit angled, but you can kind of get the gist and put some curves in there. Um, and we've got we've got some sort of eyelashes coming out that way. Now, a lot of the time, what happens is we'll end up drawing what we think is an eye, and it will be quite It'll almost be like that. And and I have seen some artists create some horses like this and, and it just looks it looks awful. Um, so you've got to be really, really careful that your eye shape is correct. And actually you only need a very, very tiny bit of eye showing. So we only need that tiny little bit there showing. That's all you need on something like this, where there's just that tiny bit of the eyeball. You know, don't be tempted to make it too round. 
because it just is going to look really strange. It just looks like there's a big, the eye's fallen out of its socket and it's just kind of poking out. So being really, really careful on um, angles like this that you don't create too much of a bulbous second eye. I think because we, we feel that it needs to be a similar sort of size to this one, but it's further away. It's round the corner, if you like. Um, and it just, you've just got to be really, really careful that it's not too bulbous. And then on the, this, not this one, where is it? This one, there's actually no eye showing at all here it's just sort of straight down so on this side we've got the um the eye socket coming down like that we've got the angle like that before it hits the um the nose there and then you've got a tiny bit of eyelash in there and then there's nothing else it might be a little bit darker down there but there's no eye socket in there at all and it's very tempting to try and put that in it's very tempting to go oh, we need to show an eye in there but we don't you know the eye's not showing in nature so we don't need to put it in on our drawing so just be really really careful when you've got something like this draw what you see not what you think you see okay um again watch your angles so obviously the horse's um eye angle is going to be very similar to sort of like the nostrils um you know and the mouth so all of these angles are the same so where you've got your eyes there come down you've got the um you know, the nostril area where the nostrils sit. You can't see the ones on this side, but you can see where the bridge of the nostril is there. Um, and then you come down. And again, if if things are very, very different, if angles are very different, see even the mouth angle here where the lip is going is the same angle as well. So if the mouth is different, then it could look a little bit strange, um, you know, when you come to draw it. I'm not sure what sort of a... Oh, I don't think it is a bit, is it? I think that must be a, um, a bitless bridle that it's got there. Um, and again, if we look at the angles on this, obviously all of the angles of the eyes, the nostrils, you can see where the, the muzzle here is just starting to sort of, his nose is going that way a little bit. So, you know, again, this probably won't look so bad, but we've got to be quite careful that, um, you know, it's not going to look strange when we take it out of context with the photograph nostrils tend to end up being too small a lot of the time so just making sure that our nostril what's the nostril is let's find something that's going to be oh there we go so the nostril is going to be the same length as the um the jowl under there the jaw under there you know you can make sure that you've got that the correct length as well um so I think just thinking about those little tips, work out what size fits what, what size is the same as the other sizes, look at your angles, um, again, kind of cheekbones like this, where's this cheekbone rel relative to the eye? It's very easy to get the cheekbone too low down or too high up, uh, you know, if you're freehanding. Um, what's it actually connected to? you know what's happening underneath the hair and the skin um you know so we've got the the eye socket coming down here and then this this is called a projecting cheekbone on the horse here um, and it's all connected it's all part of the skull underneath the horse's um, skin so working out where this lies in relation to all of the other areas on the horse what sort of angle it's running at so is this angle this angle here is the same as the angle of the jaw here um, but obviously when you cut and this jaw bit here so these these ones are all the same angle and it's also going to be the same angle as the plane on top of the horse's head here um, but when you come down to the actual jaw line here at the bottom I don't know what the angle is that's probably around I don't know 35 something like that um, you know but but really really looking at those angles and just making sure that we get those angles going in the right um, in the right direction um, you know so if you've got this the projecting cheekbone kind of coming at too steep an angle um, it's going to look very odd and you know if you're a horsey person um, you're going to really notice that so it, it's really really important to kind of get these angles correct and again not necessarily 
you're not necessarily going to have everything perfectly if you trace something because it's very easy to work on a different line. It's very easy to have traced the wrong thing. It's very easy to pick up a wrong line when you're tracing. So for me, when you are drawing, it's really, really important to keep on double checking, keep on measuring, keep on double checking your um, your angles, you know, make sure that they're all working correctly uh, and they're all in the you know the right angle um because it's so easy to go wrong even if you've traced something you know so don't for one minute think i've traced it it's all going to be perfect because it's just it, it i can guarantee it won't be you've got to keep checking you've got to keep working out is this in the correct place have i done this for a nostril uh, you know for instance you know if you just do a quick sort of outline like this which is like one of my outlines basically um, it's very, very easy to sort of rub, rub that out a little bit and go, right, OK, let's just refine that a little bit. It's very easy to end up, I certainly have ended up with this being the top line um, and this kind of disappearing off into something else. And then I end up with a really small nostril. You know, that's one of the um, that is one of the pitfalls of tracing. You can pick up on the wrong lines very, very easily. Eyes are dreadful for picking up on the wrong lines. There are so many different areas in the eye. You could have spent ages and ages meticulously, you know, putting these different lines in around the eye for all of the different, um, you know, eyelids and everything like that. And then you look at it afterwards and you go, what on earth is that? Where where do I put that? And then I end up rubbing everything out again and just, you know, redoing it <laughs> because it's so you might have drawn like a shadow line in there. But then you're thinking, well, is that? Is that that bit or is that that bit or where's that crease coming from? What's this bit? So just because you've traced something doesn't mean to say that you are going to get a perfect picture at the end of it, um, because I guarantee you won't. Um, so I hope that's been useful. They're very they're very quick tips. Um, Freehanding, I think, is something, you know, sketching. I do quite a bit of sketching from from life rather than from a photo is something that I quite enjoy doing uh, you know if I'm going to be uh, kind of mocking a piece up or something like that I'd mock them up with a very quick sketch they might not be particularly accurate but I can see where the light source is coming from all of that type of thing I can put that in um, in fact let's just pull out that so this is a um, this is a freehand sketch that I did um, for my next tutorial um, so just kind of bringing in uh, light source, giving myself a little bit of narrative as to what it is that I want to bring together in it. Uh, it just means that I can, um, I've got something to follow. I've got something in my head. I kind of know what I'm going to be doing. Um, and it's, I mean, this is a very, very quick sketch, um, you know, and not overly accurate, but it's it's giving me a good idea as to what I want the final piece to look like. So um, I think sketching Sketching from photos is very, very different from sketching from life. Sketching from photos, I think, is much easier because you've got a static subject there. You can actually, you know, get in there and measure things if you want to. If you're drawing from life, the animal's going to be moot. Well, unless you're drawing a still life, um, it's going to be moving. Um, you know, you, you've it's it's quite a quick thing to do, but I think it's I think it's a really good thing to do. Um, you know, sketching and everything, it kind of frees you up a little bit and it also makes you really look at the subject and look at how things are formed. Um, uh, you don't have to freehand at all. There is absolutely nothing wrong with tracing. I use a projector now for all of my tutorials and for all my commission work. I use a projector to just get a quick outline down. Um, it means that I lose a day or I gain a day, basically. So, um, you know, it's completely up to you. But um, no matter whether you trace or you freehand, double checking your angles, double checking your sizes against different things that are relative on the subject that you're drawing is really, really important. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. I hope to see you again soon.